Hola a todos y bienvenidos. I'm Andrew Barr and welcome back to Real Fast Spanish. Now this video will cover Spanish adjectives for beginners. Specifically, we're going to look at eight essential Spanish adjectives that you need to know in order to have a basic conversation. Now, while this video is targeted for beginners, I'm going to cover a few ideas that intermediate and advanced students don't always know. So if you are a bit more advanced, stick around because you might learn a thing or two as well. Now, adjectives are describing words. They help us identify nouns. For example, the big house, an important part. Here, the words big and important separate, for example, a large house from a small house and an important part of a car from a non-important part. Now, if we translate these into Spanish, we get la casa grande, una parte importante. Now, one of the first ideas that students often learn is that adjectives go before the noun in English and after the noun in Spanish. Now, this is a common pattern, but it isn't always the case in either language. Now, one of my favorite examples in English is the responsible person versus the person responsible. Now, one is a really good thing and the other is, you know, we need to find the person responsible for the accident. It's not so good. Now, a similar thing can happen in Spanish with certain adjectives that will change meaning with position. Keep this in mind as we come back to this concept later in the video. Now, the first two adjectives we're going to look at are contento, which means happy, and importante, which means important. Now, something that is unique to Spanish is the way gender and plural nouns work. So, for example, el chico contento, the happy boy. La chica contenta, the happy girl. Now, notice how contento changes to match the gender. You know, la chica contenta. Then for plural, we have los chicos contentos, the happy boys or the happy children. In Spanish, when we have male and female combined, we often default to the masculine form. And then we have las chicas contentas, the happy girls. Now, in contrast, when we have an adjective like importante that doesn't end in an O, we don't change the ending, but we generally still need to add an S for the plural form. So, for example, el paso importante, the important step. Los pasos importantes, the important steps. La decisión importante, the important decision. Las decisiones importantes, the important decisions. Now, in addition, we have another idea that we need to consider with Spanish adjectives, and that is that we can form sentences like this. The boy is happy. The step is important. Now, in Spanish, we have two verbs for to be, ser and estar, and we have to consider which verb to use with which adjective. Now, as a beginner, this can seem intimidating, but I can assure you that there are a few adjectives that you will use over and over, and you can get used to using the right verb with a bit of practice. So here we have, el chico está contento, el paso es importante. So we want to use contento with estar and importante with ser. And nowadays, I avoid words like always because students can find exceptions. So rather than say that this is always the case, instead I would say that estar with contento and ser with importante is a very, very common pattern. Now the next two adjectives are bueno, which means good, and malo, which means bad. Now these two adjectives are different from contento and importante in the sense that we can put them both before or after a noun with freedom of choice. So for example, la historia buena the good story. La buena historia also means the good story. There's no change in meaning here. Un día bueno, a good day. Un buen día, also a good day. Now, notice that when we put bueno before a masculine noun, we need to drop the O. And this also applies to malo. But then when it goes after, we keep the O. Whereas in the female form, it doesn't change. Now, hopefully, you should already be thinking about the question, do we use bueno or malo with ser and estar? And the answer is that we use both and there is a change in meaning. So for example, el hombre es bueno. The man is good. This means he is a good person. El hombre es malo. The man is bad. This means he is a bad person. El hombre está bueno. This means the man is good looking. It means he is attractive physically. El hombre está malo. This means the man is unwell or the man is sick. Now, often when beginners are taught about ser versus estar, they're told that ser is for permanent characteristics and estar is for temporary characteristics. Now, I don't like this because it doesn't help with sentences like these. You know, it doesn't help us understand that estar bueno 
means good looking and estar malo means sick, right? It's not obvious from permanent and temporary that that's what these things mean. And the best way to learn a language is to take sentences like these and practice them until you internalize their meaning. Now, the next adjectives we're going to look at are primero, which means first, and ultimo, which means last. Now, again, I'm not going to say always, but these two adjectives, the vast majority of the time will go before the noun. So we have el primer piso, the first floor, la primera cosa, the first thing, el último lugar, the last place, la última vez, the last time. Now notice with último, this is the first example of a masculine adjective that can go before the noun but doesn't drop the O. Now there aren't many of these in Spanish. Most adjectives that can go before the noun will drop the O. But último is an exception because it is very unusual to finish a word in Spanish with the letter M. You know, with Primer ends in an R. There are many words in Spanish that end in R. Most verbs that aren't conjugated will end in an R. But to say el ultim lugar, it sounds very unusual. So in this case, we need to keep the O. Now, again, the next question you should be thinking about is, should we be using ser or estar with these two adjectives? Now, in general, I would say that ser is the best verb to use, but something unusual happens here with these two adjectives. If we look at these two sentences, La ensalada es primero. La familia es primero. In these sentences, primero isn't acting as an adjective, it is acting as an adverb. So a translation to English that I like here would be salad comes first, family comes first, right? In this case, first is acting as an adverb as it goes with that verb comes. So that can kind of help you internalize what es primero is doing with these female nouns. Now, the next two adjectives are grande, which means big, and viejo, which means old. Now, these two adjectives are special because they change meaning with position. This comes back to that example with responsible we were talking about earlier. And the trick I like to teach to help remember the meaning change is that when adjectives go after the noun, they generally mean something literal. We can interpret what they mean literally. But when they go before, they mean something literary. So like a book, think of something romantic. They sort of have an emotional quality. So for example, una casa grande, this means a large house. We can think of something that is physically very big versus una gran casa, which means a great house. Now, notice when grande goes before, we need to drop the DE, and this applies for both masculine and feminine. And then also we can interpret this as being not necessarily a house that is large, but is something very interesting or historic. There's something very special about the house. Then we have un amigo viejo. And again, we can interpret this literally. So this means a friend that is very old versus un viejo amigo. This is a friend that you've known for a long time. And you might be high school friends, for example, but not necessarily someone that is old. Now, in terms of ser and estar, we generally want to use ser with both grande and viejo. Then if we form a sentence like this, mi amigo es viejo, then we're going to get that literal meaning. So it's going to mean that this person is old. So if you want to say that someone is a friend that you've known for a long time, then you really need to stick with that first form. Una vieja amiga de la familia. Una vieja amiga de la familia. So to summarize what we've looked at today, we can consider four categories of adjectives. Adjectives that go after the noun, contento, importante. Adjectives that go before the noun, primero, último. Adjectives that go before or after with no change in meaning, bueno, malo. Adjectives that go before or after with a change in meaning, grande, viejo. Right? Then we have the choice of ser and estar. And for the adjectives that go with ser, we have importante, grande, viejo, primero, último. Then we have the adjective that goes with estar, contento. And then we have the adjectives that can go with either ser or estar with a change in meaning, bueno, Malo. So that's your introduction to Spanish adjectives. It also doubles as an intermediate lesson since not all of these concepts are taught at the beginner level. Now, if you want more tips for improving your Spanish, we have a weekly newsletter called Español de la Semana. To sign up for the weekly newsletter, I'll leave a link below in the description. All right, so thanks so much for watching. Gracias por ver. And until next time, hasta pronto.